The Sustainable Built Environment National Research Centre is a unique blend of industry, government and research partners working across Australian industry with key links internationally. We are moving towards four big cities in Australia. Sydney and Melbourne going to eight million, Brisbane and Perth to five million. These are big cities on any global scale. And we're not used to big cities in Australia. So how do we plan for it? How do we adapt? How do we manage this kind of city? That's what our project's all about. What we have seen is that the best way to get smart and sustainable solutions is to use digital planning, digital tools, digital data, lots of information is needed and we need to make it available to everybody, the public, all kinds of researchers, all kinds of consultants and industry and we all need to work together to resolve how best to do it on our terms, what is best for Australian cities. In state government, who are constantly dealing with the day-to-day -day, um, needs of, of the government in terms of implementing their policies, and often you get to see some great academic work on a particular topic, but you're not quite sure, so how do I turn that into something that it w will help deliver the government's policies, particularly that you're on tight deadlines, you're not quite sure how to make it happen. By doing an industry partnership in terms of working with those in, in academia, you can think about that from day one. So you can think about what are projects that will help us deliver um, um, outcomes for the government but have the intellectual rigour um, that, that comes from academia. And that's when I think you can get really fantastic outcomes. So what, how do we understand how cities work? For that, we need really good information on the um, data that's available so we can do some scenarios. And so that goes right down to what types of software you use, how you have data in terms of how you manage data, um, so, are, are there, so do we need protocols in terms of how we manage the data, and then what are the visualisation tools, because at the end of the day this is about sharing information with people, and of course this is about open source, how do we get people to be able to, for not just the people for in government using, not just agencies, so that the community can come in and have a look at the information that we've been doing. It's quite important to, important to have these digital planning tools that can look at what's currently happening, do some future year forecasting, what will be the um, scenario in say 2051, and then how can we manage that and best um, optimise what we've already got as well as control some of the development that's going to occur. There are multiple planning tools and there's a lot of confusion out there as to which one is the best to use. Um, so we'd like to be involved in the conversation helping shape what tool is the best and which is the best to move forward. Um, and that really helps to keep Oricon on that front edge of the development. One of the key recommendations that we have from this research is being able to unlock the power of the digital data sets that we have for our cities and create digital data lakes. So vast arrays of big data that capture various dimensions of our city, whether they be social, economic, environmental, physical dimensions, and making that rich data available to urban modelers and urban scientists, and then being able to empower us to create robust models. This journey of modeling and simulating our cities needs to be done in partnership with the private sector. We've got the likes of Google and Telstra and Optus and MasterCard that now are creating vast lakes of data. We need to be able to tap in and work collaboratively. Researchers need to be able to work with the private sector, with those companies and with other companies that are more in, in the planning sphere and be able to combine our data assets, our intellectual capital and bring this information collectively together so we can envision more sustainable city futures. It's always difficult because uh, you need to have your models calibrated for this year, for, for uh, now. And in many cases, some of the data is like five years or three years old. We really need to increase the amount of data that is coming from the um, uh, system, if you like, uh, to, to enable a digital platform on which we can 
enhance our modeling tools. So there are a number of examples where uh, the transport modeling tools have been successful in, uh, in helping agencies. Uh, for example, uh, a model that was developed for the Gold Coast, which evaluated or which helped uh, TMR or main roads to um, evaluate a number of different scenarios. So one scenario could be to uh, build a new road Another scenario could be to enhance public transport accessibility. And the modeling tools can actually help you to determine which of the two options has better value for the public. I think that how to improve on it to make better digital planning is that, first of all, that the ability to use these tools has to be open to more people. Within government agencies, for example, there's a lot of proprietary tools that are either very expensive or else they stand alone tools that require quite high levels of um, training to use. And currently some of the open source tools are the same as well. So if there's a tool that can be used across the board, and that is it just using it in an Australian context, between the states, between the levels of government, so that something I can use in Queensland, someone can use in Western Australia or can use in Victoria, wherever. And that people can then value add to that. Look, what this project has also un unearthed that there is capability across the country, there's capability here at City Futures, at UNSW, at CUSP over at Curtin University, at Griffith University, at Swinburne U University. We have pockets of excellence in being able to do urban modelling, but there are those overseas who have, who have got advanced models too. So we need to be able to work collaboratively with our partners overseas and importantly take these models from just being academic artifacts to actually tools that are used by strategic planning agencies across the country and that's the challenge and one of the important next steps for this project to actually connect with policy makers, decision makers and have these tools on their desks. Having access to open data, which makes more data available to more people, this is effectively the democratization, digital democratization. It allows anybody to access this data. It's more transparent and also allows more data for a better quality outcome. Closed data is data that you have to pay for or that is restricted for privacy reasons. And open data can overcome this if there's de-identification of the data or aggregation of the data so that the individual cannot be identified. We're looking for uh, patterns in the general population not to identify individuals. So this, is, this isn't about big brother, this is about big data. If we encourage or if we have protocols for using open data, every time government or industry ex release or create, generate new data, then that expands the pool of data available for future scenario modeling. If, if you're using proprietary software you are limited to the capabilities of the software that you're using but if if you're using open source software not only is it cheaper because it's freely available but because it's open source different research organizations industry and government can also and citizens can tinker with that and create plugins so that you can have specific tools but it, if it's open source then other people can use it and build on it so you so you're gradually in, through, iterative, through an iterative process improving the capability of the tool and it, and it is around the democratization, because, digital democratization of the tool because it is available freely to any, anybody to use. So we have a problem. We have big cities that are emerging and lots of potential tools to help manage that future but they're trapped behind walls. We've got data that we can't access. We've got models that are being developed and then hidden. We've got the public unable to participate in this. And we need to bring it all together. The opportunity is there to create a digital platform that covers the whole of Australia and all of our cities can feed into that. All of them can use the same basic uh, supporting software and the ability to open that up so everyone can gain from it and each of us have a role to play the consultants can do lots of creative innovative things the 
academics can be constantly pushing the agenda and saying we need more of this or more of that. And the public can help shape it and say, actually, we, we don't need that, we need this. That direction, that motivation, that's what we need the public's help on. And all of that can fit into a digital planning system. So it's an exciting future, but we need to grasp it and provide for it.